each one of you, and if you will stand, please raise your right hands in our office. Other than the compensation performance of any actor that I will support, congratulations, you may be seated. Supreme Court of the State of Oklahoma. Secondly, insofar as the introduction and pre-filing of bills is concerned, uh, you can have it drafted and introduced uh, as of Wednesday when your official term of office here. Here, Denman. Here, here. Duckett. Here. here, Freed. Here, here. Glover. Here, here. Graves. Here, Tally. Here, here. Taylor. Here. here. Thompson Don. The gentleman sitting to my right, Mr. Richard Huddleston, who is the chief clerk and administrator, Persia Thrash.
first time she's kissed me in three months. Stop it, Joe. Look at that one. Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> that was better because John's head is off of that one. They call me on that one, Jess, because that was a plus while ago. Like an angel. Oh, no! No, I'm serious. <laughs> well, that one was fast. I mean, I didn't look that much. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that one. Look at that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Salvation Army Christmas Fund, folks. Your nickels, your dimes, your quarters. Anything you spare, folks. It all goes for a good cause, folks. Helps out a lot of folks. Whatever you can spare, whatever you can spare, it all helps out, folks. Anything you can. Recovery teams have been removing the dead from Jonestown since Wednesday. Today, as the recovery operation neared what appeared to be the end, the miscalculation was realized. There were not 400 bodies as first thought, but nearly twice that number. Some were found alongside a temple where recovery teams were just starting to work. Air Force Captain John Muscatelli talked to reporters. The original count of persons found dead at the Jonestown site has been found to be seriously in error. It now appears there may be as many as 780 bodies total found at the site. They were found simply buried under other bodies. There were larger adults that were grouped together, and under their bodies were found the bodies of smaller uh, adults and children. The total number of those found alive and dead now stands at slightly more than 900 people. Odell Rhodes escaped Jonestown during the suicide. Well, the first person that went up was a young mother. I'd say she was about 27 or so. She had a small baby. And uh, I'd say the baby was approximately one and a half, something like that. She walked up and just, she administered to her own baby and then she took her home. And then she went over into a field and sat down. And that's, uh, you know, it was hard to believe you know, I can understand older people maybe, but I can understand these young people just doing that. Parents were uh, talking to their children and telling them whatever they were telling them, and a lot of the children were crying. And uh, he was telling them not to tell the children that they were dying, not to tell them it was painful. He was telling people it wasn't painful and that, you know, people had to die with dignity. The Army would have been finished removing the dead had its original body count estimate been right. Now the operation will be extended at least two more days. Bob Jimenez, NBC News, Georgetown, Guyana. At the People's Temple headquarters in San Francisco, Temple lawyer Charles Gary held a news conference, this following the report that more dead were discovered in Jonestown. Gary said that now most of the members of the temple have given up hope that any more friends or relatives will be found alive. And until we got the latest count of 775, uh, many of them were hopeful that some of their kinfolks gotten away. Uh, 
it's safe to say that there's probably a couple of hundred unaccounted for right now. But uh, it just doesn't look good. It just looks horrible. Bikeman Charles. The People's Temple is preparing a complete list of its membership known to be in Jonestown before the mass suicide. This contains some medical and dental records. All of this information will be sent to the State Department to help identify the remains. Less than 100 people are still active in the temple, but member Gene Brown said their work will go on. And, and it's hard for us to look ahead and see what's going to be in the, in the future, but based on the commitment that, that you see here of people who have suffered tremendous loss, but still stand for what we believe is right, and we'll continue to stand, and whether it's together or whether we go separate ways, it's not, it, it, we can't say at this time. But, I... but some individual members said privately that they plan to leave the temple and they expect that the temple will become disbanded without the leadership of Jim Jones. Meredith Lewis, NBC News, San Francisco. maintain a freeze of, of one year. Uh, special session committee, uh, of course, Dean Kuntz's position is doing what we can to maintain the status quo until the... Why do you think we have <coughs> I, I personally feel like the governor that uh, we would probably... I don't feel that, that uh, we can look at a situation where we're going to permanently have a lower price for intrastate gas and for interstate gas, because if we get in a situation of attempting to do that, then we're going to uh, ultimately cause a shortage of gas in Oklahoma like they've had on the East Coast for a number of years. So I think it's a matter more of, uh, of maintaining the status quo and easing in the increases over a period of time if we can do that rather than, than uh, having an abrupt uh, increase on the utility consumers at one time. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is a very teacher-centered classroom here. We, we propose that classrooms ought to be student-centered. It's no wonder her, children, her students are trying to get attention. They're, they really don't have much opportunity for it, the way that classroom is set up. And you could feel the us against her attitude, right, group? Mm -hmm. All of you were ganged up against her. Remember four places. So you need to only complete, you know, the seven points, the seven units in class. You will have to complete, you know, all 20 word analysis sheets. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. They come to time for a few days like the other one. Yeah. But you need to be here on time because, you know, you're losing five points for not being here on time. Okay, so I need 190 points? No. No, you will. It's, uh, it's legal aspects on both sides, you know, and the... Uh, uh, it's, it's a lot more of a problem. Everybody's kind of on their toes about, you know, should I do this? You know, I might, uh, I might get sued or something. You know, you just really never know. It's kind of, it's kind of frightening in a way. Really. They can perform their mission. As far as being a, a, a high peak of combat readiness, no. There's no question about it. Whenever you take into account that a, that a company commander spends 10 and 20 and 30 percent of his time in dealing with a drug abuse problem, obviously that's time that cannot be put into training. When you consider the amount of money that is spent, obviously that's money that can't go into the facilities that are needed over there. No, it's having a terrible drain, I think, uh, upon our combat readiness.
Hello, <laughs> man. Can open it back up. Yeah, he's okay. See, there's a little bit of smoke there. <laughs> that's why. That's why I thought his solenoids were bad when we when we first got him here because I was afraid that they had burned up. But apparently, they had not burned up. There's several dropping resistors across them, but we took the dropping resistor. What we need is something to make them snap closed and then reduce the voltage. Okay, on his overall system, so he'll perform a little bit better. Older brother. Yeah, they're older brothers. They're not as me still in story. He's still rooting for Texas, in other words. Uh -huh. Hi there, son. <laughs> Looking better and better. <laughs> About two, three, and four are his, his older, his uh, his oldest brother looks something like R two D two. Uh, and They can perform their mission. As far as being a, a, a high peak of combat readiness, no. There's no question about it. Whenever you take into account that a, that a company commander spends 10 and 20 and 30 percent of his time in dealing with a drug abuse problem, obviously that's time that cannot be put into training. When you consider the amount of money that is spent, obviously that's money that can't go into the facilities that are needed over there. No, it's having a terrible drain, I think, uh, upon our combat readiness.
Oh, <laughs> man. Okay, now open it back up. Yeah, he's okay. See, there's just a little bit of smoke there. <laughs> that's why. That's why I thought his solenoids were bad when we when we first got him here because I was afraid that they had burned up, but apparently they had not burned up. With several dropping resistors across them, but we took the dropping okay. resistor. What we need is something to make them snap closed and then reduce the voltage. Okay, on his overall system, so he'll perform a little bit better. Older brother. Yeah, they're older brothers. They're not as he's still in story. He's still rooting for Texas, in other words. About two, three, and four are his, his older, his uh, his oldest brother looks something like R two D two. His career didn't start off with a bang. He had to learn, he had to grow, and he was injured. He overcame adversity. But the one thing Billy had that a lot of other players that possess great talents, like Billy has, was that he separates himself from the others with the maturity and the mental capabilities to understand it's very difficult in life to have instant success. Established an NCAA record a person than he is a player. I said, on behalf of the Oklahoma football team, I present this award to Billy Sims. <laughs> one billion one. <laughs> Mr. Hicks, you cannot give an admiral a gift like that.
receptions, over 200 yards a person than he is a player. I present this award to Billy Sims. <laughs> one, Billy, one. You cannot give a natural a gift like that. And go downtown or to the suburbs to them. They're your neighbors, they're your people. You'll take and the other place is going to be five dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. So I can't keep my employees on some percentage. But in the lumber, from the lumber supply, our we developed the first quartz crystals used in the newer quartz digital watches. We lost over one half of our sales volume and employment in 1977 when the Japanese dropped the world market price for the watch timing crystal from $3 to 35 cents. Imagine what would happen in the agricultural market, if someone dropped the price of wheat from $3 a bushel to $0.35 cents a bushel. What we have been trying to do is negotiate them out of the export subsidy business. Very difficult to do because it's their life. If their exports drop 5%, they have major internal problems. That's not the same for us, so we take the heat. And just don't ask for too much from government, like export embargoes, which may cause far more trouble for us than they would help in one particular industry. I know it's a burden in some places. I don't know the answer, but in your workshop back there, ma'am. Thank you. go downtown or to the suburbs to them. They're your neighbors, they're your people. You'll take And the other place is going to be five dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. So I can't keep my employees on some percentage. But in the lumber, from the lumber supply our We developed the first quartz crystals used in the newer quartz digital watches. We lost over one half of our sales volume and employment in 1977 when the Japanese dropped the world market price for the watch timing crystal from $3 to 35 cents. Imagine what would happen in the agricultural market if someone dropped the price of wheat from $3 a bushel to 35 cents a bushel. What we have been trying to do is negotiate them out of the export subsidy business. Very difficult to do because it's their life. If their exports drop 5%, they have major internal problems. That's not the same for us. So we take the heat. And just don't ask for too much from government, like export embargoes, which may cause far more trouble for us than they would help in one particular industry. I know it's a burden in some places. I don't know the answer, but in your workshop back there, ma'am. And I was going probably 20, 25 mile an hour. And I guess the gust of wind hit me when I came up over the hill and it just blew me into the median. And tried to straighten up, keep it from turning over, but uh, it just turned over. And as soon as it turned over, I told everybody just to keep calm. And most of all of them kept pretty calm. I don't think anybody hurt too bad.
I felt sorry for that driver, and I wanted to tell him what a good driver he was, but I think he was gone when I got You know, unless it's something that you absolutely have to have in order to, you know. Deserve future growth. I think you can seriously ask why. That interest on our bonded debt in Oklahoma City has grown from $3 million in 1968 to uh, over $6 million in 1973. This year it's going to be more. unless it's something that you absolutely have to have in order to, you know. Deserve future growth. I think you can seriously ask why. That interest on our bonded debt in Oklahoma City has grown from $3 million in 1968 to uh, over $6 million in 1973. This year it's going to be more than $11 million. That's $11 million that we ought to be spending on the capital needs of this city. And again, that's why I've been asking the people to defeat the bonds on Tuesday. The interest cost alone on it over the life of the bond will be about $88 million. And that's $88 million that we ought to be spending on buying buildings and fire trucks and so forth instead of paying it out in interest. Let's see here. We got a number. We got a check first. Ten eighty six. Okay. There's money. You know yes. have it. Yes, yeah, she's yours. She's. Interest cost alone.
Let's see here. We got a number. We got a check first. Ten eighty six. Okay. There's mine. You know yes. what we have? It. Yes, she's yours. She's so pretty. Oh goodness. Yes, there. Oh, she's got tears. Uh -huh. <laughs> Reach up and touch her, Julie. See how soft she is? Is she pretty? Oh, she's cute. So we think it benefits the two, three, four, five-year-old child a great deal to see her mother, to see the, the, the mother, where the mother is, and so that the infant becomes, the newborn child becomes more uh, a part of the family quicker. Looky there. <laughs> oh, look. Sit down. <laughs> look at that hat. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. We'll get rid of it. Gail, heal. Gail, heal. Here it comes. Oh, sweet. Where else, within a single lifetime, has man built so mightily? Oklahoma Cable TV, a subsidiary of the Storer Broadcasting Company, has made long and detailed preparations for the Oklahoma City Cable Communications System. Cablecom of Oklahoma City has proposed a thorough and imaginative plan for Oklahoma City's cable television needs. With Cablecom, the children of Oklahoma City get special attention, with one channel devoted exclusively to wholesome fare for your children. You get five access channels of local productions. We have channels dedicated to the black community and Spanish speaking, city government, the general public, and elementary and secondary... Ms. Williams, I, I think this bid and the... Um
I will vote aye on the motion with reluctance. I still hate to divest ourselves of all interest in Channel 25. However, it is the decision of this board, and in order to make it uh, unanimous, I don't intend to be a holdout vote on, on it. I will vote aye on this. The board and the administrative staff move very, very pleased with the consultants that we've hired. They make this the finest independent television station in the United States, and they have the wherewithal to do it. Thank you. Is there any other business before the board? Efforts on behalf of the state, her honesty, her integrity, her charm, that I would let all voices be I think the people of Oklahoma City, Nichols Hills and Midwest City and the others who have voted against bond issues are telling us a, a very clear message. They want us to do the best job possible with what we have. And I uh, think that that will give strength to my proposal to give a $20 million tax cut. Uh, and my recommendation will be in the area of the uh, federal tax credit. Mainly this will benefit younger people who are unable because of their uh, amount of monthly income at present to afford the monthly payments to get into housing. This has nothing to do with the lowering of the price of the home nor the interest rate on the loan. It really is a method of changing the repayment of the debt and spreading it differently. That the loan is still paid over the regular time, for instance, 30 years is most common on conventional loans, payable at the same amount of interest that it would be on a, on a straight amortized loan.
I think that they probably won't show as much interest in carrying out their plans. And I was speaking of this $20 billion they planned on uh, buying over the next five years. They were very uh, explicit in, in, in that when they were here. Now, they may not be uh, at this point. They, they'll they probably have to reanalyze their situation and talk to us again about it. Very warm reception. I think we do need to modernize our rape statute in Oklahoma to cover the problems of homosexual rape. Um, I do think that we ought to at least make some. I think we do need to modernize our rape statute in Oklahoma to cover the problems of homosexual rape. Um, I do think that we ought to at least make some provision for protecting a person, a wife, who is separated from her husband. Because right now, if you're separated but not legally divorced, um, if you're in the process of getting a divorce and the husband rapes the wife, breaks into the house and rapes the wife, he is not uh, guilty of having committed rape because the law specifically says that the perpetrator must not be the spouse of the victim. A lot of people, you know, want to remain as part of the Attorney General's office, and there's a lot of people that uh, would like to be part of it that are not now. And uh, coupled with that, coupled this time of the year, that sure, decisions are very difficult, but uh, I was elected to make difficult decisions, and I'll fulfill my duty to do it. And you feel like... He's going to be a boxer. He's got his little fist doubled up. <laughs> Think I was ever going to get him. Uh, 
extended drought and inadequate subsoil water and uh, inadequate above ground reservoirs in, in this county. We just don't have anything but above ground reservoirs that can supply water in this county. Uh, all the uh, subsoil water has been polluted to the point where if you drill wells, you're lucky if you get a good one. And if you get a good one, you don't know how long it's going to last. We can build millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of buildings in the field. But until we man those facilities with men that are trained and educated and have the dedication and the desire, that come back, that comes about by financial reward as well as all of the other good features that are desirable. We're not going to have a good system. We're not going to have a good program. And therein lies my disappointment with the leadership of the Department of Corrections. questions and we could answer them or the staff could answer them at this point it would be helpful for us to uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gilbert. I know there's some nasty old weather has just ripped us up one side and down the city other. manager is not in such well I'd like to put in form motion that we return the use of salt <laughs> on our roads on a limited basis but at the discretion of the city manager I would urge that we use sand wherever possible with the, with the use of salt if there's some areas that he can sand instead of salting I think we should do this but I think that we need to leave this up to the city manager I feel like the safety of the people has reached a point that it needs to be a higher consideration than a few dollars that we might save. Time around the city and about half another, I am very nice. Yeah, that's a good question. No. And that's what, you know. What is yep. available tonight aside? First conditions, but over which we have absolutely no control. You people not to tie the, the city manager's hands. Well, you didn't beg me. Leader Joe Fitzgibbon. The assistant majority floor leaders are. I, George Nye, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend, that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution.
If people ask me, as they have, press ask me, what do you want your administration to be noted for? Of course I want progress. Of course I want better services. Of course I want better government. Of course I want more for the people. I want it at all possible reduced costs. I want more for the folks. But I want the hallmark to be honesty and integrity. folks, but I want the hallmark to be honesty and integrity. Now let's have a little clapping or something.